Hi, it's Evan, and welcome to the video that I've waited a long time to put together, my full festival preview, where I look at all 28 races for the 2023 Cheltenham Festival and give my thoughts and analysis behind each one. Now, we're not going to go into as much detail here as I have done on previous anti-post videos. If you're interested in those selections, take a look back through my past videos. But what I am going to do for every single race is put up, regardless of price, the most likely winner of the race, and then at the current prices, the best value bet. Now, in some cases, that might be around the 3 to 1, 4 to 1 mark. In other cases, that could be, you know, 20 to 1, 33 to 1, etc. We still don't know what the ground's going to be like at the festival. Some sources saying we're going to get rain, others saying we're not going to get rain. It's currently looking like it may be good, good to soft, um, but we don't know. So these selections are with that in mind. And also we don't know which horse is going to be definitely entered into which races yet. But we've got a good idea. We've got enough information to put this video together. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now up first, Day one, race one, we've got the Supreme Novices Hurdle. Now at the top of the market, we've got three horses, Fasal Vega, Marine Nationale and Ilate Tomps. And I believe the winner of this race will come from one of those three. Now just to touch on each, Fasal Vega firstly was the odds on favourite and has been the favourite all season for this race up until the Dublin Racing Festival where he surprisingly lost. Um, maybe the pace of that race was too fast. Uh, maybe he wasn't good enough. I guess we'll find out at Cheltenham. But that race was won by Ilate Tomps, who, like I said, is also at the top of this market. And then we've got Marine Nationale, whose trainer Barry Connell is so confident and so bullish that he's going to win this race. Um, we haven't seen him since the back end of last year where he won the Royal Bond. Um, that form may be good. You know, beat Irish Point, who looked disappointing on his last run. Um but like I say, Barry Connor is so confident on the chance of Marine National, that has to be taken into account. Then at bigger prices, we've got horses like High Definition, who fell in that race at the Dublin Racing Festival, who could still be anything. We've got Tamuras, who won the Tolworth Hurdle, the race that Constitution Hill won last season before coming to win this race last year. Um, and another horse I'll touch on in a second, do I like. But my pick for this race, my best bet, I'm keeping it simple, the horse that I think is most likely to win this race is Fasal Vega. I'm going to say that that race, the pace of that race at the Dublin Racing Festival was just too much for him. I think Paul Townend's going to give him a much more sensible ride in this race, the Supreme, and I think he's the most likely winner. As a best value bet, without picking one of those other two, I'm going to go for a horse called Dr. Bravo, at a much bigger price, around the 20 to 1 mark. Um, I think he's looked good this season, and in his most recent run against Phil Dore and Charger, finished a very close up third, um, Look, just to pick a horse out at a bigger price who may have a chance of going well in this race, I'm going to go for Dr. Bravo. Day one, race two, we have the Arkle Chase. The two-mile chase for novices where, again, I think similar story to the Supreme. There's three horses at the top of the market and that's where we'll find our winner for this race. Now, first of all, we can probably narrow that down to two horses because we've got El Fabiolo and John Bon at the top of the market, both contesting favouritism, both, you know, between the kind of six to four, two to one mark at present. Um, El Fabiolo won the Irish Arkle at the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, I really like El Fabiolo. That was a really good race. Um, made a few jumping errors throughout and that could be the downfall of him. But if he jumps well at Cheltenham, I think he's got a great chance of winning. John Bond, the horse that was second behind Constitution Hill in last year's Supreme Novice Hurdle, um, has looked brilliant since moving to fences this year. Um, looked in trouble maybe in a two-horse race on his last start, but quality prevailed and you know won that race quite nicely. Um, I genuinely think the winner of this race will come from those two. But then we've got around the kind of five to one mark, Dysart Dynamo, who also contested that race at the Dublin Racing Festival behind El Fabiolo. Um, he's the horse that fell in the Supreme last year behind Constitution Hill and John Bomb. And then after those three horses, you know, I don't think we'll see a massive field in this race. Who knows who's going to run? So I'm going to keep this one simple. I think the most likely winner of this race is El Fabiolo. I think if he jumps nicely, jumps well, he will have the better of John Bond. 
Um, and I therefore think the best value bet, this is quite unoriginal, is Dysart Dynamo, currently at around the 5-1 to one mark. I genuinely think um, El Fabiolo will win the race. I think John Bond has a great chance. It's almost a coin toss between the two. But then, you know, as a likely third place um, and a horse who whose speed could still win in this race is Dysart Dynamo. Day one, race three, we have the Ultima Chase. The first of the handicaps that we're going to look at at the festival. Now, the Ultima is a wide open race. It's kind of, you know, six, seven, eight to one the field. There's going to be loads of runners in this race. So many horses with chances. But I've got to pick what, or two horses that I think have um, good chance of winning and good value. So the horse that I'm going to select in this race as the most likely winner is a horse called Oscar Elite. Now, first of all, UK trainers have a great record in this race. So I wanted to pick a UK trained horse. Oscar Elite is trained by the Tizards. Came third in this race last year off a rating of 138. Is rated 139 for this year's festival in his eight-year-old season. Um, so not too much difference there. I think he has a great chance of winning. He looked good when he won last time, albeit in a three-runner race. But he is my bet or my most likely winner of this race. Then a horse as best value. Again, looking down the market, another UK trained horse trained by Neil Mulholland is a horse called Lord Accord. Now, Lord Accord, again, as an eight-year-old, um, back end of last year, won at Cheltenham over the ultimate distance, three mile one, a chase over three mile one. Then came out again, again, over the ultimate distance, three mile one and finished a close up second behind Frodon. Another horse that's been clearly targeted at this race and Lord Accord is my best value bet. Day one, race four, we have the champion hurdle and a race that I'm not going to spend too much time talking about because at the head of the market, we've got the very short priced odds on favourite Constitution Hill, a horse who I cannot wait to see in the flesh at the festival. I think most likely winner of any race at the festival, barring a fall or anything like that. Um, I think he takes the world of beating in this race. I think the price obviously reflects that. And I just cannot see past Constitution Hill winning this race. Behind him in the market, we've got State Man, um, won the county hurdle last year, has looked good this year. And then we've got Vorband, won the Triumph last year again. Um, I can't see them two beating Constitution Hill. Um, but, you know, if anything happened to Constitution Hill in this race, I guess they could. Um, my value bet in this race, almost a bit of a jokey one, is I like to move it at 14 to 1 currently. I think... Let's imagine, hypothetically, that State Man, Vorban, Constitution Hill all absolutely went all guns blazing at this race, um, took each other on and all just run out of gas at the end. I think I like to move it could, in theory, then steam past and win the race. He was an impressive winner, 17 length winner of the Kingwell Hurdle this season. Um, a horse I like, a horse I'm actually on at 40 to 1 each way, so hoping for a bit of place money there if he comes top three. Um, but like I say, almost a bit of a joke because I cannot see past Constitution Hill winning this race. Simple one for the champion hurdle. Day one, race five, we have the Mayor's Hurdle. This race looks like an exceptional renewal of the Mayor's Hurdle. Some very good horses in this race. Previous, multiple previous champion hurdle winners, um, multiple grade one winners. I think this is going to be a really good race. At the top of the market, we've got Honeysuckle. Last year's champion hurdle winner um, came second behind State Man at the Dublin Racing Festival. A nine-year-old um, will Honeysuckle, you know, be good enough? Still, the quality that she was to win this race. Who knows? Then we've got Epiton, another nine-year-old um, needs to be supplemented to be entered into this race, but I think she will be. It looks like Nikki Henderson's going to send her to this race. I love Epiton. I think she's got a good chance too. Um, Marie's Rock, if she's entered here over the Stayers Hurdle, obviously has an exceptional chance. She won this race last year. Um, it's just a case of whether Nicky Henderson is going to send her here or if he's going to send her to the Stayers Hurdle. Uh, my selection in my last anti-post video. So if you want to hear, you know, 20 minutes of talk about Echoes in Rain, then go and listen to that. But Echoes in Rain priced around the 7 to 1 mark. I think she's looked brilliant this season. I won't go into too much detail, like I said, um, but I think she has an exceptional chance of winning this race. Um, then you've got horses like Brandy Love, for example. Um, you've got Love Envoy. You've got... Queen's Brook, horses who have question marks around them, but who knows how well they'll run. Love Envoys look very good this season. Um, Brandy Love came back in the race with Queen's Brook on her seasonal reappearance and 
I wasn't too impressed with. Maybe that's me being harsh. Um, I don't really think Queensbrook's that good of a horse. Has been turned over multiple times this season at prices of odds on. Um, and Brandy Love finished, you know, third behind her. Um, was hoping for more from Brandy Love. Look, she's back to her best of last year. She will probably win this race. But I guess the question is, is she? Um, but look, a great field. I think cases can be made for every single one of those horses. Um, I'm going for my best bet in this race of Marie's Rock. I think if she goes here over the Stayers hurdle, she has an absolutely exceptional chance of winning. Looked brilliant at Cheltenham this year against the boys. Obviously, this is a same-sex race in with just the girls in this mayor's hurdle. Um, I can't see past her as the winner. Obviously, my value bet is Echoes in Rain, who I could have maybe put up as my best bet for the race or my most likely winner of the race. But I'm going for the value price. I put her up in the anti-post video at 10 to 1 last week. Um, her price has shortened slightly, but still around the kind of 7 to 8 to 1 mark. Um, I think she's still brilliant value at that price. I think she, I want to talk more, but go and look at my previous video if you want to see my full, you know, 15, 20 minute analysis on Echoes in Rain. I think she is an exceptional value bet for this race and um, will run very well. So most likely winner, Marie's Rock, best value, Echoes in Rain. Day one, race six, we have the Boodles, handicap hurdle, the juvenile handicap hurdle at the festival and... Again, a wide open field, a field that the Irish are absolutely dominating. Um, I would guess we will have an Irish winner this race, although hold that thought until my value bet in a second. <clears throat> I'm going to keep this one simple. I'm going for Takao as the most likely winner of this race. Um, actually had Takao for the triumph earlier in the season, um, but has clearly been targeted at this race. At the Dublin Racing Festival, Mark Walsh was clearly holding on to Takao, you know, to make sure that he didn't go too hard behind Gala Marceau and Lossy Mouth and kept a nice mark for this race. I think he is the most likely winner in what is a wide open field. But my value bet, if you follow me on Twitter at Cheltenham Time, this is going to come as no surprise to you, is a horse called Perseus Way, a horse that I've loved all season. Should have beaten Nusret in um, his last start, hit the last two hurdles and that looked to cost him the race. Um, maybe that run has kept his boodles mark down nicely and that will actually give him a better chance in this race. Trained by Gary Moore, so a UK trainer, even though I've just said that an Irish trainer is probably going to win this race. I should probably be sensible and go for a horse like Cougar at 14 to 1 or Punta del Este at 12 to 1. But I can't get away from Perseus Way. I've been banging on about him all season, so I'm going to put him up as the best value bet. Thought he was going to go to Aintree, but it does look like he's going to target the Boodles at Cheltenham now. So for this race, most likely winner to Cal, best value, Perseus Wayne. And then final race of day one. Day one, race seven, we have the National Hunt Chase. Not a race I particularly like the look of when looking through the market. We've got Galli de Mesnil at the top of the market, around the kind of 11 to 10 evens mark. Um... A number of horses in and around the kind of 5 to 1 to 10 to 1 mark and bigger prices the rest. Now, I am going to be boring and put up Gallard de Mesnil as my most likely winner of this race because I think he probably is if he goes to this race. Um, he is kind of the nearly horse. If you look through his form, he comes second, third a lot. Came third at the festival last year in the Brown Advisory behind Ahoy Senor and La Homme Press, um, which is decent form, don't get me wrong. And won a grade one in December this year, albeit in a race that fell apart. Um, I think he probably does win this race, but again, it wouldn't surprise me if one of those other horses improved and won and ran past him. There's also a chance he may well go for the Brown Advisory again um, because it looks a weaker affair than last year's race. Um, so look, I don't love it, but I'm going for him as my most likely winner of the race. Then at bigger prices, looking through, I like City Chief, um, but I'm going to go for Manella Crooner, um, a horse at double figure odds who... Looks to be a slow horse, but maybe that's because Manella Kruna has a lot of stamina and is going to be well suited at this three mile five distance national hunt chase. Has changed ownerships this season. Um, has looked like a decent horse, you know, has run well, beat Iron Maximus in that tough, gruelling race. A um, few second places in and around the season. I think if I'm going to have a stab at a bigger price, a horse that looks good value, a horse that genuinely could win this race, it's going to be Manella Kruna. There's my two selections for this race. Like I said, I don't love it. I don't love this race. But we're going to go most likely winner, Gallard de Mesnil, and best value, Minella Kruna. On to day two. And up first, day two, race one, we have the Ballymore, 
for the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. Now, last year in this race, we had Sir Gerhard as a short price favourite who went on to win the race. This year, the race is wide open. There's some brilliant horses at the top of this market. Um, I think it's going to be quite difficult to pick a winner in this, this race. But just to run through those at the top of the market, Hermes Allen, um, who won the Chalo, um, an expensive purchase last year, looks to be a very good horse. Um, obviously only has UK form so far, so it'll be interesting to see how he fares against the Irish horses. Speaking of Irish horses, we've got Impere Pass, uh, a Willie Mullins horse, who is a lot of people's favourite for this race. I think has a great chance of um, winning the race. Although, you know, easier competition in his races this year. Um, although won them very comfortably. Gaelic Warrior. We kind of know what Gaelic Warrior is. Obviously, we saw him at the festival last year. Um, came second in the Boodles, um, even though he cruised round and looked the winner all the way home. Has run very well this year, winning every race this season. I think Gaelic Warrior has a great shot. Then Goodland, um, another Barry, Hod Barry Connell horse like Marine Nationale in the Supreme. Barry Connell, again, is so, so bullish on the chances of Goodland, like his uh, Marine Nationale, and really believes that he's a great horse and he's going to have a great you know, shot at winning this race. Champ Kylie, who you know we've already seen this season um, win impressively, albeit in a race where you know I think three of the final hurdles were taken out, so it almost turned into a bumper race at the end. Um, but that also looks like good form. And plenty more horses as you go down the list who you could argue have shots at this race. I think the winner will come most likely from those horses at the top of the market, obviously. Um, and the horse I'm going to go for, the horse who I think has the most likely chance of winning, is Goodland. Now, Goodland we saw win at the Dublin Racing Festival over a slightly longer distance, two miles six. Um, beating good horses like Sander Clegane, for example, um, like Absolute Notions, horses who, you know, Absolute notions maybe still be entered into this race as well. Um, but I think Goodland has looked exceptional. I'm kind of falling on the hype train of Barry Connell and believing that, you know, it has a great chance of winning this race, even though I didn't put on Marine National to win the Supreme. Um, I think Goodland has a great chance. There's question marks over those other runners. So my best or most likely winner is Goodland. Then my bet for best value is Dark Raven. Um, obviously, in my anti-post series that I've done previously, um, I have put up Dark Raven as a tip to win the Ballymore at 33 to 1. Please go back and listen to that kind of 15 minute video if you want to know my full thoughts. Probably since that video, there's even bigger question marks now of whether Dark Raven will go for this race or will he go for the Supreme. Obviously, the owners have Impere Pass at the top of this market. We're not sure where Hunter's Yarn will go yet, maybe a handicap. So they could target Dark Raven quite easily at the Supreme. But if it was me, I'd still be putting Dark Raven in this race. I think Dark Raven needs the extra distance, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Um, so at 20 to 1, I still think there's juice in that price, even bigger on the exchanges. Dark Raven is my best value bet for this race. Day two, race two, we have the Brown Advisory, the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. Now, this race is one where the market looks quite open, to be honest. And there's lots of horses in, still in the current market who aren't going to be got targeted for this race. Um, at the top of the market, we've got Jerry Colombe at seven to four, who I'll come on to in a second. Then we've got horses like the Real Wacker, Time Hill, um, all at single figure prices. Gallard de Mesnil could come here, although you know, I've put him up as my most likely winner of the National Hunt Chase. I think he will probably go to the National Hunt Chase. So Gerhardt might target this race, may target the Turners, time will tell. Uh, Mighty Potter's not going to go here. But I think if we focus on the favourite first, Jerry Cologne, a lot of people's you know, nap for the festival. A lot of people think Jerry Cologne has a fantastic chance of winning this race. And I do too. But I think the key here is going to be the ground for Jerry Cologne. Jerry Cologne's going to want it you know, soft or, or worse. Um... Whereas at this point in time, based on how much rain it looks like is forecast for the festival, the ground is likely to be good, good to soft maybe, and it isn't really going to suit Jerry Colon, which I think could trip him up when it comes to winning this race. Not literally. Um, instead, I think the most likely winner of this race is therefore Time Hill, a horse who came second at the festival last year in the Stayers Hurdle behind Floor and Porter, has then moved to fences and has had an interesting time of it, I think it's fair to say. Um, first run, one, was fine. Second run in a three-runner race, um, finished second behind McFabulous and did not look impressive at all. But then his last run, again against McFabulous in a decent field, horses like um, Gelino Bello, Gala Delitto, um, McFabulous again, like I say. Won, won impressively, won by 15 lengths, a grade one, the Corto Star Novices Chase. Um, 
And if we just look at that run alone, he has an absolutely fantastic chance in this race to Brown Advisory, and I think it should be probably further up in the market. So like I say, Time Heal, my most likely winner in this race, probably controversial, especially when a lot of people are going for Jerry Cologne, but I think he's got a great chance of winning. Then as we look down the market, there's nothing that I particularly like for value. So I've gone for a horse at a bigger price, currently around the 14 to 1 mark, is a horse called the Devil's Coachman. A horse who I actually thought had a chance of, you know, going over hurdles, winning the stayers this year, but will stay over fences most likely. Um, has never run in England, so assuming he does come for the Brown Advisory at Cheltenham, this will be his first race in the UK. Um, had a decent season, won at Galway in October, um, beating Churchstone Warrior. Last race in January at Nace, um, that race where Romilly's finished ahead, but the Devil's Coachman won the race on a decision because you know the stewards deemed that there was interference there. Um, I think he's got a chance. I've liked the horse for a long time. I think at 14 to 1, that's a generous price. There's probably horses, you know, shorter in the market who have a much more likely chance of winning. But when it comes to value, I think the Devil's Coachman at 14 to 1 is a good price and is my best value bet in this race. So to conclude there, most likely winner for me is Time Hill. Best value bet is the Devil's Coachman. Day two, race three, we have the Coral Cup. Another handicap. I think genuinely this race out of all 28 is the race that I have the least opinion or the least strong opinion on. Um, such a wide open race, so many entrants. I genuinely don't know where the winner will come from. Um, but I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going for Camprond, a JP McManus horse off 138, a horse who would have most likely been targeted at this race. Um, should get into this race, going to need a few to drop out, but should get into this race off that mark. Um, and like I say, a good horse who's been targeted this race. I think when you see a horse in the JP McManus colours, you always feel like they've got a good chance. Um, yeah, so he's, he's my most likely winner for this race. Um, best value selection for this race. Um, I've been looking through the market and I found one at a price of 33 to 1. It's Anna Bonina, the horse who finished between Queensbrook and Brandy Love in Brandy Love's reappearance recently. Um... Price of 33 to 1, off a mark of 140, looks fair. I don't know where to go with this one. So Anna Bonina is my best value bet and Camprond is my most likely winner of this race. But they are, you know, tentative selections here. Day two, race four, we have the Champion Chase. The Queen Mother Champion Chase. Now this race looks a lot easier to call than the last. Two short prices at the top of the market. We've got Energumine and we've got Edward Stone. I genuinely think in this race you can toss a coin at which one of those two is going to win. Um, I think it's close. But I slightly prefer, I think, the bigger price in Edward Stone. I think since winning the Arkle last year has looked a great horse. Um, we didn't really know at the time what that form would look like, but this season has proved that that form looks pretty strong. I think Arkle form translates quite well into champion chase form, both two-mile chases. Um, I think, yeah, look, he came out Came second at Aintree at the Aintree Festival after Cheltenham last year. Came out this season and won the Tingle Creek, um, beating Grenatine, which kind of put him on the radar for this race initially. Uh, then unseated at his next race, but then finished ahead of an Ergamine at Cheltenham in a race that he actually came second behind Edit at the Geet um, in January. It's based on that factor alone, the fact he looked to be finishing stronger than an Ergamine, even though an Ergamine hit the last fence quite hard, I'm going to say he's going to have the beating of an Ergamine this season, and he is my most likely winner of this race. Now, at a bigger price to find a you know good value bet, uh, I'm going for Gentleman Demi, who's quite a risky option because he actually beat Edward Stone at the Aintree Festival last year after Cheltenham. Um... Is quite an up and down horse. You know, some runs can look fantastic. Some runs can look absolutely terrible. But basing it on Gentleman Demi's last run, the Dublin chase at Leopardstown, beat Blue Lord by seven lengths, looked an impressive win. I think that win alone gives him a shot. Um, I don't think he'll be Edward Stone or Anergamine, but you never know what's going to happen in these chase races. So eight to one, I think, looks like a generous value price. So therefore, this race, most likely winner, Edward Stone. Best value bet, Gentleman Demi. Day two, race five, we have the cross-country chase. A race again where there's two horses at the head of the market who look to be battling this out. We've got Delta Worker Evens. We've got Galvin currently at two to one. Um, a similar story to last year where we saw Delta Work and Tiger Roll. Obviously, Delta Work won that race last year, won this race last year. 
Um, and I personally think has a great chance of winning this race again this year. Um, I really like Del Work. I think he's clearly been targeted for this race this year. This is his Gold Cup. Will likely go to the Grand National as well, so has a shot at that race. Um, but I can't see past Delta Work winning this race, especially you know what he did last year, a very impressive winner of this race. Galvin's a great horse himself, um, but I think this is Delta Work's race to lose, and therefore Delta Work is my most likely winner of this race. As a value bet at bigger prices, again, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going for last year's third, plan of attack. Gets in this year off a rating of 138. Um, behind those front two in the market, I'm not really sure who's going to come from where to finish You know, in the places. So we're going for plan of attack. 10-year-old has a shot at getting in the places this year, currently priced at 33 to 1. So Delta Work, most likely winner. Plan of attack, best value. Day two, race six. We have the Grand Annual. Another handicap chase, another race I look at and think, where are we going to find the winner from this race? Um, at the top of the market currently, we've got Dino Blue, a horse who disappointed a lot of people when went off favourite for the Mayor's Novices Hurdle last year. Um, has looked okay over fences. Um, I think it's probably a short enough price at 7-1 to one, though for this race. Um, Andy de Fresne, a horse who a lot of people have tipped up. Off top weight, not getting any younger. I'm not sure he's... Um, quite the horse he was last season so I'll be staying away from him a horse I like though is Orkham Risk currently priced at eight to one in the market he is my most likely winner of this race um has had a good season was in that race with Boot Hill finished second to Boot Hill in the uh, grade two wayward lad novices chase before going back to hurdles and winning the Betfair hurdle beating Farley Bay in that race um, I think that's even though over hurdles I think that's very good form there I think eight to one, most likely winner of this race. Um, yeah, for me is all can risk. Then looking at a value bet for this race, looking down the market, a lot of tipsters have been talking about a horse currently at twenty to one called Time White. Um, one at Ascot on seasonal debut, goes here fresh, uh, dropped to a mark of one four seven. Like I say, a lot of people fancy him. And I don't have any strong fancies, so twenty to one. I'm going for Time White as best value. I'm going for all can risk as most likely winner of the race. The final race of day two, day two, race seven, we have the Champion Bumper, a race that I am really looking forward to seeing at the festival. I think there's lots of horses in here who could be anything, could be superstars, could go on to do bigger and better things. Um, lots of horses with chances that you can make cases for. At the top of the market, we've got a dream to share. Then you've got It's For Me, who's kind of in the high horse of the season, who... Looks super impressive on um, his single run this season, but against what? Who knows? Um, fun, fun, fun. Probably won't go for this race. Better days ahead. Beat Chapeau de Salau on his last start. Um, everyone's expecting Chapeau de Salau to be much better than that run. You've got Encanto Bruno's unbeaten. You've got Factor File, who was beaten by A Dream to Share uh, in that race at the Dublin Racing Festival, the Future Stars race, the race that... Fasal Vega won last year before going on to win this champion bumper at the festival. And for that reason alone, because Fasal Vega did the double at uh, the Dublin Racing Festival and then the champion bumper last year, I'm going to say a dream to share, who has since been bought by JP McManus, so obviously really likes the horse, um, is the most likely winner of this race. I'm really excited to see a dream to share go at this race. I think, look, Again, it's wide open. There's lots of horses that can win, but just simply based on that Dublin Racing Festival run is the most likely winner of this race. Um, then at bigger prices, the horse that I put up in my first anti-post video on my series this season, please go back and take a look at it, is Queen's Gamble. Um, Queen's Gamble is now priced in kind of the mid sort of teens, 14-ish to one. Um, I still really like her. Look, she disappointed last time out in that listed race. Um, where she was beaten and what probably fair to say wasn't expected to be beaten. I don't think the race was run to suit. She looked to come off the bridle way too soon, um, was pushed for home and sent for home You know, too early. That didn't really seem to suit her. For all the reasons that I explained in my anti-post video, like she's got the Cheltenham course form, like she's going to be getting the mayor allowance, mayor's allowance, um, I still, still think she has a good shot at this race. And I think... All that that race has done that she came second in has enhanced her price here. So I think she's great value. Currently around the 14 to 1 mark, Queen's Gamble is my best value runner in this race. And a dream to share is my most likely winner. On to day three. And day three, race one, sees the Turners. The Turners novices chase. This one's simple for me. 
Marty Potter at the top of the market, I think looks like a good thing, has looked brilliant all season, was super impressive at the Dublin Racing Festival, almost untouchable, nothing got near him. Uh, I think he just goes and wins this race. Um, as a value bet, look, looking through the market, I think there's a lot in current markets that are actually not going to be entered for this race. To be honest, there's nothing else I really like at value, so I'm going to be boring here, and I'm going to just put up Bambridge as the best value bet. The price is actually not not great, currently around the 4-1 to one mark, very close to Mighty Potter. Um, but I like Bambridge, a good horse who won the Martin Pipe last year. Looked very good at the Dublin Racing Festival, was in that Irish Arco race that El Fabiolo won, but was finishing like an absolute train at the end, looked to need further distance, and therefore this two mile four turners will help Bambridge most likely. Um, maybe on the off chance that the ground was, didn't really suit Mighty Potter, the ground was too good, um, Bambridge might have a great chance of winning. So, look, I can't see past Mighty Potter. Mighty Potter is the most likely horse to win this race, but as an additional bet, a value bet, um, in keeping with what we're doing on this episode, let's go for Bambridge. Day three, race two, we have the Potemps. A handicap hurdle over just under three miles. Um, and in this race, we've got some good horses like Percival Lagawa, shoot first um, at the head of the market. Um, but a horse I like, currently priced at seven to one. My most likely winner for this race is a horse called Maxim. A Gordon Elliott trained horse who looked really, really impressive in his qualifier run for this race. Um, finished first by 16 lengths in a 27 runner field. And based on that run alone, I think he's got an absolutely fantastic chance of winning this race. Came out and disappointed in February after that run, but Gordon Elliott's come out and said we can draw a line through that. He didn't get the run of the race. Um, so I really like Maxim as my best, most likely horse to win this race. Um, then as best value bet, there's a horse in there, Nicky Henderson's horse, called Steeler March at 14 to 1. Now, Steeler March won his qualifier for this race back in December on Boxing Day. Um, but the reason I like this horse is quite simple. Nicky Henderson was asked for two horses that he really liked for the Cheltenham Festival, and he picked out Lucia and Steeler March. So for that reason alone, the fact that Nicky Henderson clearly really likes this horse, I'm going for Steeler March as my value bet, and I'm going for Maxim as my most likely winner. Day three, race three, we have the Ryanair Chase. Now, the Ryanair chase looks like an interesting race. It's a race where Alaho was, you know, quite a short price favourite throughout the whole season. And then in recent weeks, Alaho has been pulled out of the race due to injury. Now, that kind of coincided with Shishkin being upped in distance, um, entered into the Betfair Ascot chase, the grade one over two mile five, and won that race impressively by 16 lengths. And since then, Shishkin has been a short price favourite, now even odds on in most places, to win this Ryanair chase. And I think that's probably fair. Um... We saw Shishkin most impressively come out and win the Clarence House chase in that race against Denergamine uh, last season before Cheltenham. And then hasn't looked the same horse since then, but came out last time and, you know, looks like he's back to his best. Um, I genuinely think he's, you know, the most likely winner for this race. Let's see how much that last race took out of him. We'll obviously find out at Cheltenham. Um, but Shishkin, most likely winner for this race. It's an interesting field. There's some good horses in there. I like horses like, you know, Blue Lord, Fury Road. I think they've got chances. But my best value bet, currently in the mid-teens, around the 14 to 1 price, is French Dynamite. I'm not going to go into detail because obviously I put up French Dynamite in my anti-post series as a horse that I like at the prices. So again, please go back and look at that if you want more detail. But my best value bet, French Dynamite. My most likely winner, Shishkin. Day three, race four. And we've got the Stayers Hurdle, a race that I'm really looking forward to at this year's festival. Uh, I could probably spend about 20 minutes, half an hour talking about this one, but I'm going to try and rattle through it. At the top of the market, we've got Blazing Carl. Looked impressive on his reappearance after a long layoff recently. Um, I worry, you know, how will he get on at the festival against a much better field? Tiupu, um, famously this season, you know, took Honeysuckle's unbeaten crown and won that race um, over two miles four start of the season came out over three miles last time and looks good although you know there's question marks about that race it looked like a very slowly run race and he pulled up very quickly at the end um he has the we know he has the ground concerns needs it soft and i would say there's still the distance concerns there as well um marie's rock could go to this race could go to the mayor's hurdle i'd say that's a coin toss at this point home by the lee a horse i like a horse that i'm going to be putting up as my most likely winner of this race um, a horse that I put up as my 
I think it was my third video in the anti-post series. Um, look, I think Home by the Lee has got a cracking chance of winning this race. I think he's been super impressive this year. He's travelled so well through the races against you know good horses like Florin Porter, for example, who won this race last year. Travelled nicely, has had that turn of foot at the end of races, and I think is the most likely winner at this race. And you know, good value in the price as well. Currently around the six to one mark. Florian Porter, like I've said, won this race the last two years, um, has disappointed this season, comes alive at Cheltenham, we know that, it'll be interesting to see how he goes, but I don't think he's going to be winning it this year. Then we've got injury concerns over horses like Classical Dream, um, so Gerhard's in the market won't go here, Buzz won't go here, and Paisley Park still sitting pretty at 14-1 to 1 in the market. Look, I'd love the story of Paisley Park won, um, I think the stats are that a nine-year-old hasn't won this race since 1920. Or sorry, a horse over the age of nine hasn't won this race since 1927. Paisley Park is in his 11-year-old season. That stat alone says that look, he's probably got no chance. Um, but it would be a good story. One other horse in the market, and my value bet for this race um, is a horse called Gold Twee, who is a French horse who came over and actually beat Paisley Park into. I think Paisley Park came third in that race this season. First run in the UK. Uh, looked good, and the owners have actually supplemented the horse for this race, currently at a price of 10 to 1. Um, based on the fact that I'm putting home by the Lee as my most likely winner at a price of 6 to 1, to find you know a better value price than that, I think Gold Tweet's got a shot. I think it's interesting that he's been supplemented for this race. Looked good on that race at Cheltenham, so it's got the course form. So Gold Tweet at 10 to 1 is my value bet. Home by the Lee is my most likely winner. Day 3, race 5, and we've got the plate or the Craft Irish Whiskey Co. Plate Handicap Chase, as it's now officially called. Um, another handicap race, and another race where I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going for my most likely winner as the favourite, So Scottish. A horse who, again, like a number have this season, has been purchased by JP McManus. And when JP McManus splashes the cash on a horse, I always think it must mean they're pretty good uh, and have got a good chance of winning the race. So, so, so Scottish, keeping it simple, is my most likely winner for this race. Currently at a price of four to one. I think that price will probably shorten as we approach the festival too. But the one I've been looking forward to talking about in this race is my value bet. A horse called Cool Cody won this race at the festival last year off a mark of 145. Has actually been dropped after his last run to a mark of 143. So he's going into this race off a lower mark than what he won last year. Currently a 10-year-old, that probably doesn't help his chances. Um, but look, won me a lot of money at the festival last year, a big price, I think 33 to 1. It's currently 33 to 1 in most markets currently. Um, I think he has a chance. I love the price of 33s, even if that price probably will come down to you know 25s, 20s, might even go off 16s, 12s on the day. I think there's still a bit of juice in that, just based on based on the rating and comparing that to last year. I love the horse. Like I say, I'm probably thinking with heart rather than head on this one. But Cool Cody is my value bet for the plate. And so Scottish is my most likely winner. Day three, race six. And we've got the Mare's Novice Hurdle. At the top of the market, a really impressive looking runner in the shape of Lucia. A horse who's unbeaten in four runs so far. Uh, in her last run, the listed race, again, just looks super impressive. Um, quite Constitution Hill-esque almost in that when Nicky de Boinville presses the button, the horse just goes away from the field. Uh, last race, that was you know very evident, one by 11 lengths, like I say, in the listed race. Um, and in the races before that, has looked very impressive. Obviously, the Mayor's Novice at Cheltenham will be her toughest assignment yet, but I think just looks you know a class apart. I think after the Mayor's Novice hurdle, we're going to be having the conversations of should the horse have gone for the Supreme Novices Hurdle, how would she have performed in that race? Um, she is my most likely winner for this race, unsurprisingly. Uh, my value bet for this race, the horse that I think looks like good value, is a horse called Magical Zoe. Uh, currently priced at 10 to 1 in the market. A horse we haven't seen since last year, 2022, um, because she looks like she's been put away specifically for this race. Again, another horse who's unbeaten, three starts, three wins. And in that race, beat the Model Kingdom. It looks like a very good yardstick. And Nikini. Um, the key thing about that race was the eye-catching speed at the end. Um, when the jockey pressed the button, the horse just went away and ran away from those two quite decent yardsticks. Um, so I think it'd be really interesting to see how Magical Zoe goes. And at a decent price of 10 to 1, I think represents good value. So Magical Zoe is the best value in this race. And Lucia as the most likely winner. Day three, race seven, we've got the Kim Muir, 
a handicap chase, the final race on day three, and I'm going to be pretty unoriginal with my most likely horse to win again and go for the favourite. A horse called Stumptown, a horse who looks visually very impressive on his last two starts. It was actually Ruby Walsh's comments after his last race that have really encouraged me into you know, picking this horse as the most likely selection to win. Ruby Walsh was really bullish about this horse's chances in the Kim Muir at the Cheltenham Festival. Um, still some juice in the price at around 4-1, to one, and I think he's the horse with the most likely shot of winning this race. Um, at bigger prices for a value selection, there wasn't too many that I fancied. I've been looking through the form of this season. I've looked through last year's race, and the horse that finished third last year, a horse called Didero Vallis, um, like I say, came third in this race last year off a rating of 127. Um, is currently priced around the you know 33 to 1, kind of 50 to 1 mark, depending on where you look. Uh, and we'll be going at this race this season at a race of a rating of 122. So in that race last year, was staying on really nicely at the end, um, almost looked to be challenging again. And off a rating of you know five pounds lower, I think has a chance this year. Even though it was at a disappointing season and is now ten years old, um, I think as just as a random you know value bet, picking one out that will likely target this race, Didero Vallis as the value selection, and Stumptown as the horse who's most likely to win the race. On to day four, day four, race one. We've got the Triumph Hurdle, the two mile juvenile hurdle. A race I am really, really looking forward to at the festival. A race that's been talked about in the last few weeks, especially in preview shows, because Blood Destiny has come into favouritism. Um, Lossy Mouth has been the favourite for this race for the majority of the season. But there's a lot of talk about Blood Destiny. Quickly just talking about the two in the race there. Um, Blood Destiny has run, actually lost on debut in France, but has progressed really nicely, has improved really nicely. Um, come, in, come to the UK, two runs so far in the UK. The second of those, probably the most impressive, was given a massive lead along a long leash as such, um, and the field never pulled him back. Uh, beat Nazareth by 18 lengths, similar kind of distance to what uh, Lossy Mouth beat Nazareth by in one of her races this season. Um, I think it's pretty hard to tell where Blood Destiny sits currently. You know, those races weren't graded races. What does the form of those races look like? We're not sure. Um, could be a very good horse, but I'm definitely siding with Lossy Mouth on this one. Lossy Mouth looks the class horse has won a grade three and a grade two this season and was very, very unlucky in that grade one at the Dublin Racing Festival. Was pushed right the way back, coming around the you know, final turn by a stable mate. Stayed on really nicely, caught back up with Gala Marso almost, um, but just couldn't quite get to Gala Marso. Finished about three lengths behind in the end. Um, I think if it weren't for that really you know, unfortunate event during the race, uh, Lossy Mouth would be unbeaten and she would be a very short price favourite for this race. Um, she will be getting the mayor's allowance, the £7 mayor's allowance from Blood Destiny in this race. I think she's the quality horse and she's the one that I'm going to be siding with as my most likely winner of the race. I've touched on Gala Marceau there, the horse that beat Lossy Mouth in that race at the Dublin Racing Festival. Finished behind Lossy Mouth in the race prior to that. Um, I think Gala Marceau is a very good horse. Like I say, I prefer Lossy Mouth. But similarly to my thoughts on the Arkle, where Dysart Dynamo is kind of the third player there behind the two market principles, I think Gala Marceau is kind of the third horse, third horse behind those two market principles in the Triumph. Um, and for that reason, is my value bet currently around the kind of five to one, six to one mark. Um, I think, you know, has a shot of winning this race. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how it pans out between those top three in the market. I don't think there's much in behind, really. A lot of the horses in the market will be targeting the Boodles as well. Um, so for that reason... Most likely winner is Losty Mouth, and best value bet is Gala Marceau. Day four, race two, and we're on to the County Hurdle. This is the race that State Man won last year off a nice mark. Um, I don't think we've got any horses to the quality of State Man in there this year, but another handicap, a wide open field, a field where cases can be made for a number of horses, but the horse I like as my most likely winner is a horse called Jin Coco. Now, Jin Coco has never finished out of the top two on any runs under rules, always first or second in every race to date. Um, a nice looking horse, a horse who has great form with I Like To Move It, finished second behind I Like To Move It in the Greatwood Hurdle this season. Um, I Like To Move It, obviously the horse that we spoke about in the Champion Hurdle preview earlier. Um, and therefore, Jin Coco is my most likely winner of this race. As a value bet, looking further down the market, I really like a horse called Winter Fog. Now, Winter Fog, you might know from last season's Potemps, went off joint favourite for that race, finished fourth. 
Winter Fog in this race is going to get the £7 claimer. Kieran Callahan's going to be on board. Um, Willie Mullins was really keen on this horse in his stable tour, which is part of the reason why I really like the horse. Uh, we know that the horse is going to target the county hurdle. We know that the horse is going here. We'll get in off the current mark, and therefore I like Winterfog as my value bet and Gin Coco as my most likely winner for the race. Day four, race three, and we've got the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. A race that I've spoken about quite a bit in my anti-post videos, as the horse I'm going to put up as my most sightly selection, I have already put up as an anti-post selection. Um, that horse is going to come as no surprise. It's three-card brag. But just to talk about the other horses in the market currently, <clears throat> at the head of the market, we've got a horse called Corbett's Cross, a horse who won impressively recently, has won his last few races. Um, and as we've mentioned a few times in this video, has been purchased since by JP McManus. Um, obviously, he liked the horse, and therefore the horse has a good chance for this race. We've also got Embassy Gardens at the top of the market, who you know had a nice run against not sure really what um, won by I think it was like thirty five lengths last time out hasn't done a lot else this season I'd be steering clear of Embassy Gardens Hidden Valley Lake has been the favourite for this race for, or was the favourite for this race for a long time but disappointed last time out um, I'm happy to take a step away from Hidden Valley Lake for the time being then we've got three card brag the horse that I really like for the festival. Um, I'm not going to go through all the reasons in detail again. Please watch one of the last few videos where I put Three Card Brag up as an anti-post selection for that. Um, in short, I think Three Card Brag has got very good form this season. I think it's crying out for the three-mile distance. We'd probably prefer soft ground, so you know we, we might have good, good to soft ground. Um, I don't think that is a complete negative. I don't think um, that completely eradicates his chances. Um, I really like him for this race. I've liked him for this race all season, and I think he has a really great chance of winning the winning the race, so therefore he's my most likely horse for this race. Um, at bigger prices, to pick out a, a value bet, I've picked out a horse that I was actually talking to someone on Twitter about, um, and ever since then, it's caught my eye, I've been considering it, and it's a horse called Rock My Way. Now, Rock My Way currently sits at 16 to 1 in the betting. Rock My Way has been out twice this year to date so far, uh, both times at Cheltenham. One last time out, beating Pembroke, which I think is its best piece of form because Pembroke is now, you know, seven to one second favourite for the county hurdle. Um, I think that looks like really good form. I think Rock My Way could be a really smart horse. And at 16 to one, still a big price. I'm happy to take a punt as a value bet in the Albert Bartlett this race. So three card brag as my most likely winner of the race, still at a juicy price around eight, nine to one. And then Rock My Way at 16s as the best value bet. Day four, race four, and on to the big one, the Cheltenham Gold Cup, the flagship event for the festival, a race I'm really looking forward to. I don't think we need to overcomplicate it. Galloping Deschamps heads the market, looks good at the top of the market. It's been favourite most of this season um, and looks a fantastic horse. Let's, uh, let's not beat around the bush. Since the Martin Pipe in 2021, um, the race in which Gallop Interchamps won at the festival has pretty much won every single race since. Why I say pretty much is because the one race that he hasn't won is the Turners at the festival last year where he fell, but all but won that race. You know, he was comfortably winning going into the last, made a mistake, fell at the last hurdle, and unfortunately, you know, didn't didn't win that race, obviously. Um, I think Gallop Interchamps is an exceptional horse, has been stepped up in distance over time, ran at the Dublin Fa Racing Festival over three mile one, beating Statler. This race, obviously, slightly more distance, but I think that Leopardstown, that Dublin Racing Festival performance showed that he clearly stays the distance, the Gold Cup distance. I'd be very surprised if there was any um, changes to that on the day at the festival. So, yeah, quite simply, most likely winning the Gold Cup, Gallop into Champs. Now, as a value play, um, not really show, sure where to go with this one. There's horses in there I like. Um, I like Sounds Russian at 20 to 1. I like Prote Prote Protectorat at 14 to 1. Um, the horse I'm going to go for as the value bet, though, is Statler, the horse that finished second to Gallopin de Champs at the Dublin Racing Festival. I think we'll like this extra distance in this race, albeit you know, a furlong or so. Um, has the proven Cheltenham Festival form, obviously won at the festival last year. I like Statler, I think Statler's a good horse, and I think as a you know value bet behind Gallopin de Champs, currently around you know eight, nine to one in the market, is my value bet for this race. So, most likely winner, Gallop into Champs, value, Statler. Day four, race 
five, and we're on to the Fox Hunters Chase. Not a race I'm too interested in at the festival too much, um, but I will put up two selections for it. My most likely winner of the race, I'm going for Vorselay. Current favourite in the market. Uh, probably no shocks or surprises there. Currently around the 9-4 to four mark in the market. Now, David Christie actually trains the top three in the market. Vorselay, Ferns Lock and Winged Leader. But it's clearly said that Ferns Lock and Winged Leader are very unlikely to make the festival um, unless something happened to Vorselay. So they won't even be going to this race. I think Vorselay is a fair price as he is. And I just think he's the most likely winner of this race. Now, my best value for this race is actually the winner of this race last year, Billaway. In fact, the only horse to have beaten Vorselay uh, since 2021. I like Billaway. I think Billaway is a good horse. Um, very impressive winner of this race last year. And why I say very impressive is because he looked well beaten, miles back. And the, the leader was just tying up. Billaway came from nowhere, stormed home to win. One that sticks in the memory. A really nice win. Um, <clears throat> I think he's got a chance of doing it again this year. So that's why he's my value bet at six to one in the market, roughly. And Vorselay is my most likely winner. Day four, race six, the penultimate race at the Cheltenham Festival. This one's the Mayor's Chase and a race that's been dominated at the head of the market for a long time this season by two horses. Interestingly, both novices, they're Allegory Devassi and Impervious. I think both have great chances in this race. Um, just to start with Impervious, a horse who ran at the festival last year in the Mayor's Novices Hurdle, um, did okay, finished sixth. This season has gone over fences, is therefore a novice over fences, has won all three of those races, beating good horses, Dino Blue, Journey With Me, for example, has been purchased by JP McManus, like a lot of horses have this season. Um, I think she looks good. I think she's got a great chance. But the horse who I'm going for as my most likely winner... Again, it's the favourite, similar to the last few races, is Allegory Devassi for Willie Mullins. A horse who's had two runs over fences so far this season. Um, won both of those by about 20 lengths each. Has looked really impressive. Could be an absolute superstar. In the last race was the race where Paul Townend, you know, nearly fell off. Just managed to hold himself on that first fence. Um, but then when she gets going, she does look like she travels so well. She does jump nicely when she gets the hang of it. And I think she, um, well, she is, for me, the most likely winner of this race. At bigger prices, I wanted to suggest Jeremy's Flame as a value bet, but Jeremy's Flame's quite a short price now at 9-2. to two. Um, I'm going for LMA. I'm hoping LMA is going to, you know, def try and defend her crown this year. She won the race last year. Um, she's got the experience. You know, those two at the head of the market are novices. I think they've got great chances, but, you know, could they be overturned by a more experienced horse? LMA clearly knows how to win this race, won this race last year, is nine years old now, but a price of 20 to one, I can't get away from that value. So my value bet for this race, assuming she goes, is LMA. And my best um, best bet, most likely winner of the race, is Allegory Devassi. Day four, race seven, the final race of the Cheltenham 2023 festival is the Martin Pipe, race number 28 out of 28. And the horse I'm putting up as my most likely selection to win this race is a horse called Cool Survivor. Cool Survivor is currently priced at 7-1, to one, so a bit of value in that price. Um, goes into this race off a mark of 136 for Gordon Elliott. I think Cool Survivor has had, well, has, has a good season, is a six-year-old. Um, came out this season on debut, won a maiden hurdle, a 20-runner race. Uh, then came out following that over three miles in a listed race and won that nicely. Has been beaten in the last two races since then, um, but not disgraced. Uh, penultimate race was beaten by Hidden Valley Lake, who we spoke about in the Albert Bartlett preview. And last race was at the Dublin Racing Festival, um, beaten only four lengths by Goodland. And as you'll know, Goodland is my selection to win the Ballymore. So that's decent form in itself. I think Cool Survivor has a cracking shot of winning this race and is my most likely winner of it. Um, then looking at a value bet, I've looked down the market um, in fact, I should say, Spanish Harlem is the favourite for this race, currently priced around the 5-1 to one mark. The horse who beat Spanish Harlem last time out is a horse called uh, Rian, a horse that's currently 16-1 to one in this market. Now, for a Gordon Elliott horse, a horse that Gordon Elliott likes, a horse that's getting into this race off a mark of 135, a horse who beat Spanish Harlem the favourite, I think Rian has a shot. A shot at value, a shot at 16-1, to one, um, I like the horse. I don't think we need to overcomplicate it. So Rian is my value selection for this race and Cool Survivor is my most likely winner. So that's it. 
all 28 races at this year's festival covered. We've picked a most likely winner and a value selection for every single one. It was light when I started filming. It's dark now. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully this has given you some food for thought for all the races at the festival. If you have, please subscribe to the channel. Next year, we're going to do a full anti-post selection series where we're looking you know, a long way out from the festival at horses that we, we like for next year's festival. Good luck to everyone who's punting on this year's festival. Hopefully we find a few winners between us and I'll see you again soon.